the slightest opportunity he gets away from politics is the best time for Johnson Sakaja to unwind the day through riding a bike, riding around his neighborhood as he tries to connect with the little things that matters most to him. In his bloom of youth and at only 33, Sakaja is currently among the youngest senators in Kenya and he has lots of reflections for 2018. 2018 has been an interesting year, um, both for myself as an individual. It's my first uh, full year as a senator. So that, that counts as part of the experience and the joy of being able to serve the people um, of Nairobi and uh, the people of Kenya. What will you consider your greatest moment and at the same time the lowest for 2018? We have had many high moments as a country. Our sports people look at Kipchoge, look at what he's been able to achieve. Um, even our country moving from the poisonous politics that we've had before, the handshake. And my lowest moment was what happened in uh, Solai. Um, you know, we lost so many people um, in a disaster that could have been averted if people just followed the law. Um, if people got licenses for the work they do, the dams, etc. And, and going there, listening to the tra traumatized children, for me was my absolute lowest moment. Mm. But because of that, then uh, myself and uh, Senator Mutula um, came together and said, let's sort out the legislative framework around disaster management. And that's one of the bills we sponsored and it passed this year. So that then became my highest moment as a legislator. Mm -hmm. That uh, this year we've at least been able to see a problem and see how to address it and create the framework mm -hmm. through which it can, be, um, it can be addressed. But there is even a more personal story that touched him in 2018. The story of William Maura, a man from Roy Sambo who was dumped by his lover for being broke. So when I came to church that uh, next Sunday, I had the story, I said, oh my. I will support this young couple. I'll make sure he gets a job. I'll make sure he gets a livelihood. And I'll send a vehicle for his wedding. And I could see the emotions. He could not let go of me. He was hugging me. He was crying. So on the day of the wedding, I said, let me not even send a vehicle. Because it's easy. It's easy to tell the driver, peleka ile gari, said, yeah, I want to then come back in the evening. I said, let me go drive him myself, the couple. Because not just for them, but to pass a message that you should never look down on anyone because of their financial means mm. or because of a situation that they have found themselves in. Because it is the same God who lifts you, who puts somebody, you know, where, where they are. Sakaja's staff first stole the public limelight in 2013 when President Uhuru's then party, the National Alliance, had hunted him to lead the campaign machinery. The handshake between President Uhuru Kenyatta and opposition chief Raila Odinga, he says, stood out in 2018, but sees this as just a roadmap for the country. I really respect and laud and appreciated the step taken by President Uhuru Kenyatta and the right honorable former Prime Minister Raila Odinga in saying, you know what, let's come together, let's leave the politics of the poisonous politics of the past and start a new chapter for, for our country. That for me is amazing. Now we want to see in, the, in 2019 then what actual steps do we take? Because it, it cannot just end, end with two people shaking hands. It has to now go into real action. We need to deal with issues of our syllabus. We need to deal with issues of vernacular being spoken in public places. You must create an opportunity where every Kenyan knows that no matter where they are, no matter where they are from, no matter what their surname is, they have an equal opportunity at making something out of themselves. That is a Kenya we want to see in 2019. In September 2018, Sakaja openly differed with Nairobi Governor Mike Sonko on the directive to ban Matatus from accessing the CBD in what will point to a not-so-rosy relationship between the two leaders. You just decide to come up with a policy for, oh, I, I don't feel Matatus should come into town without giving an alternative way to provide that transport. So, of course, that is why we said, look, first of all, there's no consultation with leaders. It is not thought out. Nairobi needs a serious rethinking of its mass transit system. These uh, bandage solutions will not work for this city. This is a 21st century economy. Nairobi is the capital of Africa, literally. Look at what has been happening in our country this year, Blue Economy Conference and all these things. So that is why I oppose that move. But I said you cannot expect, I remember seeing even a pregnant woman collapsed because of the distances they were walking, you know. Then you say, oh, we'll get buses from NOS. And you've not even thought about it. NOS only had 18 buses on, on that day. They didn't even bring them. 
So not only did I go to court, I also provided 100 buses to shuttle people to and fro. But whenever we make policies, and I hope 2019 becomes the year of the Mwananji. So to hear your political ambitions. Mm. Born and raised in Parklands, Nairobi, the last born in a family of three, went to Aga Khan Nursery and Primary School up to 1998 and later joined Lenana School. He graduated from the University of Nairobi with a degree in actuarial science. This one was called Masi. He loves cars. This is his first Mercedes 124 acquired while in his third year at the university. So I acquired this for like 300k. Interestingly, uh, the previous owner of this car was Senator Wetangula. Serious? But I didn't get it through him. I got it in a, in a car yard. Oh, so one day, you know, he kept seeing this car. That time we were doing a Kibaki's campaign, the former president. So he used to wonder, who is this who's coming with my car? Then he realized it's me. He told me, ah, I should have, I'd have given it to you less 200,000. <laughs> <laughs> Looking at where the country is at the moment, what sort of Kenya will you want to see in 2019? 2018, coming off from the elections of 2017 and 2018, We've had a lot of policy declarations as a country. We've talked about big four. I want to see the groundbreaking of uh, houses in Nairobi, for instance. I want to see uh, medical equipment being taken to our hospitals. I don't want to see another Pumwani issue, you know, that we implement this. These things we are saying, other Kenyans will lose up and say, in my story too, these are just stories. The tempo of politics expected to go even higher in the coming year, the youthful leader says, he hopes 2019 becomes a year of implementation for fast-sighted reforms in the country. Francis Ontomwa, KTN News.